everyone, welcome back to Alice in the Giant Bookshelf. Today's video is all about all of my options for Shorty September. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Alice and I have way too many books and in my constant pursuit of reading those way too many books, I have pulled off my shelf everything that would possibly qualify for the upcoming readathon that is Shorty September. What is Shorty September, I hear you ask? Shorty September is a readathon hosted by Sean and Bert at Pastory Time and Heather at Soggy Expat Book Nerd. And they host this each September to help us to read short books. So the aim is reading short books and the prompts are all tied into different types of shorts and different types of short books. Now, according to the hosts, short books could be interpreted however you want. I believe the general indication is under 200 pages but I have gone slightly over that in some of my picks and I've taken everything from my bookshelves that could possibly qualify up to about 230 pages I think was my maximum. There are 12 prompts and I do have 12 books but my 12 books definitely probably don't match the 12 prompts, they're just my 12 shortest books. So I thought I would go through all of them today. I probably won't read all 12 in the month of September because I do have some other commitments and other books to read, surprise, surprise. And I'll be talking all about those in another September TBR upcoming soon, probably next week. So <laughs> This is very much a pile of possibilities, not a set in stone TBR, but I am hoping to get to some of these and make a dent in my ever increasing giant TBR. I have ordered my pile from the shortest to the longest and if they match up with any of the prompts I will try and tell you. If you want to know more about Shorty September I highly recommend checking out the host's channels which I will link in the description down below. Without any further ado let's look at all the short books I could find on my shelves that are under 230 pages. So starting off with my shortest this one is very very short it is in fact only 41 pages excellent so I will almost certainly read this one in Shorty September and this was sent to me by the lovely Charlie Brook from Charlie Brook Reads for my birthday and it's Ghostly Stories by Celia Fremlin. I'm not sure if there was a prompt that would match this. So this contains two short stories called The Hated House and The New House. I think they were originally published in the late 60s. That's all I really know about them. It says on the inside cover that there's a little, a little Patricia Highsmith, a touch of Shirley Jackson. The long neglected Celia Fremlin wrote short sharp stories that threw women's lives into shiver inducing relief. In each of these twin tales, a mother and daughter meet again and an ordinary home becomes the setting for the return of the repressed. So really looking forward to this one. And I think September is always a good time to read slightly spooky books. M maybe October is better, but I don't mind, it's the start of autumn so. My second one does fit one of the prompts, it fits the prompt of denim shorts to read a modern classic and this one is 106 pages long and it's a very famous modern classic of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. I have bizarrely never actually read of Mice and Men although a lot of people of my age read this for GCSE English. My school for some reason did not read this for GCSE English so I've never read it. Bad excuse. I was sent this by the lovely Gemma from Gemma Books who loves to increase my TBR so yeah I have always wanted to read this though so I am very grateful 
really. And this is a compelling story of two outsiders trying to find their place in an unforgiving world, the blurb says. I don't really know a whole lot about Of Mice and Men. I think there's a character called Lenny. I know that it's set in America. I know it's one of Steinbeck's most famous books and I'm delighted to find that it's only about 100 pages long so I'm sure I can fit this in to Shorty September and finally, finally read that. The next two are much newer to the giant TBR and you may have seen them in my recent book haul and this one is clocks in at 128 pages and I would describe this one as an unexpected purchase which means it qualifies for the prompt of Pedro Pascal shorts and it was unexpected because this was not at all on my radar before I went to the booktuber meetup a couple of weeks ago. This is The Word for World is Forest by Ursula K Le Guin. If I read this it would be my first Ursula K Le Guin. It's a novella about like a ta hostile takeover of a planet I believe. I think there's going to be killing and violence and dystopian mayhem. We will see. I have no real clue what I'm going into with this one. Now this is an author I'm more familiar with. I've read one of her books before and it is of course the wonderful Becky Chambers. I picked up on the same shopping trip to be taught if fortunate by Becky Chambers and this one clocks in at about 135 pages so another very short one and I've heard that this is more traditional sci-fi than the Wayfarer series. Um, I think this is about an explorer on a mission to um, survey some other habitable worlds. But I don't know any more than that and I don't want to know more going into it because it's only 135 pages long. Pretty confident of getting to this. I mean maybe this could count for Lodge Shorts, a book bought because I was trying to be cool because everybody loves Becky Chambers at the moment right? I don't know, maybe. Also really hope to get to this lovely little one that I bought on my birthday and this one, this one is 152 pages and it's Big Blonde by Dorothy Parker. I wasn't 100% sure whether this was short stories or one um, short novella but I think it is like a novella. It does have a contents page though so it could be really short stories. I'm sure I will find out when I read it. I'm sure this does fall into an unexpected purchase as well because I just saw it on my birthday and randomly bought it. There wasn't a particular reason for that purchase other than having heard of Dorothy Parker and wanting to read one of her books. I know absolutely nothing about this book, it doesn't even have a blurb on these little penguins so I will go into it completely blind which is nice. And this one was also an unexpected purchase but I'm delighted that this one fits in for the prompt of Dolphin Shorts which is a book with water on the cover. So this is The Carhoolan Army by Sarah Hall. I bought this one on my birthday as well. I've obviously been looking for short books recently and this one clocks in at 207 pages so we're starting to be a little bit over but I don't really mind. 207 is still a really short book to me and I think this one is dystopian. It sort of uh, describes it on the back as um, the Lake District's answer to The Handmaid's Tale. So very, very much looking forward to this. I've been talking in other videos about how I'm in a bit of a dystopian and apocalyptic reading phase at the moment. So can't wait to get to this one and may well pick it up in September. Another one that's been in a video really recently because I won it in a giveaway. This one clocks in at 211 pages and it's Everything the Darkness Eats by Eric LaRocca and this one is supposed to be a horror, like a very emotionally raw horror apparently and there are occult forces in this one which means I can count it for Spanx, a book with magic or witchcraft. So I'm going to do that. And yeah, I'm not sure how I'll get on with this. I don't read an awful lot of horror and I don't know a lot going into this one, but it's one I would really, really like to read because it looks so interesting. So that is that one. 
The next one is a much more familiar author to me and an author who I have very few of her books left now. So this is Absent in the Spring by Agatha Christie. This is one of her books she wrote under the pseudonym of Mary Westmacott and it clocks in at 215 pages. This one involves a woman returning from visiting her daughter in Iraq who finds herself alone and stranded in a, a rest house um, because the railway tracks become flooded. And I don't know any more than that. I only have, I think, three of the Wet Mary Westmacott books left and I think one book of Agatha Christie plays and then I will have read I think pretty much everything that Agatha Christie has produced, which will be a sad time because I love them, but also I will be able to reread them, so that's good. This maybe could slightly creep into a historical read. Is it historical if it's set in the 40s or 30s? Maybe. I've been meaning to get to that for a while. And then we have another one. Uh, this one's been on my shelf for about a year, I think. And I may have even bought it with the intention of reading it last shorty September. This one's 220 pages and it is The Midwich Cuckoos by John Wyndham. I recently had a not so successful read of a John Wyndham book, The Crack and Wakes, but I'm fairly confident that The Midwich Cuckoos is going to be a lot different to that one and a much more enjoyable read. First published in 1957, so still can't count it uh, for the prompt from the 70s or 80s. Oh, I know what the, I know what I will use this one for actually. I'm going to use this one for half and half shorts, um, which the prompt is to read the book and then watch the movie. And there, I don't know if there's an actual movie of this, but there was a recent adaptation of The Midwich Cuckoos, I think on Sky TV, that I didn't get to last year, starring Keely Hawes. So I would really like to read this and see that. And I might even make a video comparing the two if I do get around to that. This one's about mysterious happenings in a village of Midwich, where I think something happens with the children but I'm not entirely 100% sure. The next one on the pile, they, we are getting bigger and bigger as I said, is 216 pages. This might actually be shorter than the Midwich Cookies. I've probably somehow, well, they're about the same length, but never mind. Um, so this is trying to set a record for being shown in the most TBR videos, I think, and for never getting read. But I bought this last year for 50p in a charity shop and it's Women Talking by Miriam Taves. If you've been around for a while, you'll know that one of my absolute top favourite books of last year was uh, a Miriam Taves book, which was her latest, Fight Night. I really, really loved that. I know this one's going to be completely different because this one is an imagined response to real events and the real events that it's an imagined response to is something that took place between 2005 and 2009 in a remote Mennonite colony where over 100 girls and women were raped by what they thought were ghosts or demons and their reports of this were basically dismissed. So this is an imagined response to that about how the, these women go on to learn the truth. I just think that this will be such an interesting and moving book and I, I would love to read this in September. I hope I get to it and stop showing it in TBR videos. Again, I don't think that there's really a prompt that this would apply to. This one I was going to use for the magic or witchcraft prompt, although I'm not positive that either of those feature. This is The Girl of Ink and Stars by Kieran Mild Hargrave. And again, this was a charity shop pickup last year, but by my mum. This one's 222 pages, but they are quite large print anyway. <laughs> and lovely designs on the pages, I must say. This is about a girl who is forbidden to leave her island, but dreams of faraway lands that her father once mapped. And she's determined to be part of the search party when one of her friends disappears. So I don't know any more about this than that, and I don't need to. Yeah, I think there might be some element of magic in this, but I'm not sure. If you've read it, let me know in the comments if there is a magical element, I suspect there might be. I think this also won a Waterstones Children's Book Prize at some point, so really looking forward to getting to more of Kira Millwood Hargrave's sort of middle grade YA books. 
And the last one on my pile was recently sent to me for my Mr. B's book club crime syndicate subscription. This one is 229 pages so it's the biggest on this list and it's On Java Road by Lawrence Osborne. I would count this for um, a mystery which is prompt number 10 ripped shorts and this one is set in Hong Kong but I don't know an awful lot about it. I think there might be a ghostly element as well but yeah I, I would like to get to this one especially as I do want to get to more of my subscription books a bit quicker so it would be good to get to this one. And that is everything that is in my possibilities pile. I did have some more books that are probably under 250 pages but I, I thought 12 was probably plenty. I think we've got 12 there. I sadly do not have a translated book to show but there is a chance I might read a translated book which might also be short enough to qualify because I now need to read a book for Spain as my last book for the Women's World Cup readathon. I think I'm going to pick a short book for this, probably a novella that will have been translated from the Spanish so I will let you know what that is or when I know what that is. I might have covered most of the rest. I don't think I had a book from the 70s or 80s although some of these come close. I also don't think I have one for a spicy read or a gossipy biography and I don't know if any of these would qualify as a comfort read. Probably not really but if any of them are comforting I will let you know because that was one of the prompts as well. If you'd like to know all of the prompts I will link them in the description down below. Do let me know in the comments do you like short books? I love short books um, and are you hoping to read any in the month of September? If so let me know one that you're planning to read or just let me know which of these 12 do you think I should prioritise the most. You could even leave me a comment just with a number saying how many of these 12 you think I will read in September. Even though they are a pile of possibilities I am impressed with myself that all of these are from the giant bookshelf and not from the library or anywhere else. So I do have 12 really good opportunities to read from my shelf in the month of September. Let's hope I don't get carried away with other things. Thanks for watching today. If you have liked this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I will hope very much to see you all again soon for another video all about books here on Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Bye for now.